Hi everyone, my name is Charlie and today I am going to be bringing you some rambling opinions about A Single Thread by Tracy Chevalier. Basically, I have been recording another reading vlog this week, but because I've gone into some depth about the book, I've decided to separate those clips and include them here. I'm hoping they'll make some sense. They're going to take place over two days, but I think that seeing that video would be a lot better than me including a 20 minute discussion thing about this book on Sunday. I'm still currently reading A Single Thread by Tracy Chevalier. This is the dust jacket because, as we know, I do not read books with the dust jacket on them. At the end of my last vlog I talked about why it's a bit of a strange one for me in terms of the fact that I don't think it's doing anything new but the nostalgia of it is lending itself to my enjoyment of this book. Once more I find myself disappointed by a book for not doing anything new. I think this book is too cosy. I've said that it reminds me of a story from The People's Friend and it's very cosy and quiet and quaint. It's another story similar to The Binding last week that is hitting every note that I expected it to hit. Indeed, there is some lesbian representation in here that I had expected because when you have a book about women during the war, there will always be that secretive lesbian relationship that everyone knows about but doesn't talk about but still disdains the women within that relationship. I hoped for something slightly different, a twist on something, but it hasn't appeared yet. Everything feels almost like a caricature of 1932 Britain. And I said that I liked it for its nostalgic quality at first, but that has slowly left me feeling like it's doing nothing new. There's no conflict in the story and I feel like there needs to be some sort of conflict. There needs to be some sort of story here and at the moment I haven't really found anything. Violet seems to get everything handed to her on a plate and whilst she might be mildly upset about it I don't see that she ever runs into any struggles. There are 100 pages left now and I need something big to happen. She is thinking that there is a man who followed her through a cornfield and I have an idea as to the identity of this man. We'll see how things go. If I'm right, I will be disappointed. If, if I'm wrong, I won't be disappointed. If I'm wrong and it turns out to be some great twist and it all works out and I haven't spotted clues, then I'll be thrilled at this point. Whilst editing this video, I realised I never said whether or not this twist happened that I had expected. And the twist did not happen. And I actually still ended up being disappointed. To give some context, there may be spoilers here, but there is this character who appears whilst Violet is taking herself on a walk. She thinks he is chasing her through these cornfields. Then her friend Arthur appears and she mentions this guy to him. And this this sense of unease. Now, in terms of story, I want to feel as though characters are fully formed. Whilst characters can be villains, there may be a nice side to them that we're not shown. And you are told that from the off that this man is a bit of a bad guy, a loner who keeps himself to himself. Now, I hate this idea that people who keep themselves to themselves are immediately villains, and yet that is exactly what we get in this story. I hoped for some resolution as to who this man was, but it never came, and finally there was a very fast bit of plot shoved in there that included this character. I don't think there needed to be consequences in this instant, but because it was just used to cement this idea that this guy had been a villain, I feel as though what had happened was Tracy Chevalier wrote this book and her editor said, look, there's no conflict here. So she shoved this guy in really quickly to have a few scenes where Violet got chased and was feeling a bit uneasy before at the end, he decides to trap her. Now, it made no sense to me. He's forgettable and unnecessary to the narrative at the end of the day. And I do feel he was just this extra piece to say, oh, look, we have this mean lone gentleman in here, just to properly capture the idea that this book is as cliche and tropey as a book gets. I feel like every single character was 
a one note character. You're told the character is good and you like them and that stays throughout. There are no arguments, there is nothing that changes, no characters have any growth. Every character is the same at the start of the book as the end and they're just there to be this one person. Indeed, her brother Tom just spends the entire book calling her old girl and I felt like is this is this all the author knows of the 1930s is just this man calls people old girl or old chap. Some men have ideas of chivalry and everyone was so cliché that the more I think about it the more I just want to vomit from the idea that this book did nothing new, nothing exciting. There is such a wealth of brilliance that could have been found in there but the author just wanted to unleash this trite cliche. I am disappointed in this book. The more I think about it, the nostalgia factor doesn't count anymore. I can enjoy a hundred pages of nostalgia before I need story, but 330 pages without any story, just a snapshot of a piece of the world that I already know and I think every reader knows what that was poorly done isn't enough. If you were looking for well-rounded characters, you weren't going to find them here. The writing is easy to read. It's doesn't inspire much work of the brain and Tracy Chevalier knows how to spin a yarn. I'd say that if I still gave star ratings this would very much be in the middle of the pack. I don't know that it would ever be worth a reread yet. If you've ever watched a TV show set in the 1930s or once more consumed any form of media based around that time period then this will hit every single beat for you and you will like the book. Originally, I did recommend this to Emily from Novel Novels, but I don't know whether I can rightly do that now because it doesn't do anything new or exciting. I want more from the book than I'm getting. Last night, I finished reading A Single Thread by Tracy Chevalier. Despite my initial excitement about this book, that soon dwindled. I read the first hundred pages extremely quickly and adored the sense of nostalgia and that quality that this book had. As I read further and I thought about whether this story was anything different, was it ever going to have any sort of plot, I began to realise that whilst this is a quaint, quiet story, for the most part this reads like the author did a lot of research and wanted to share all of that research and the information that she'd gathered within the book without realising that she had to create some sort of narrative around it. I kept hoping that the story was going to go somewhere. I want to read part of the blurb to you before I say what I want to say next. Violet falls in with the Broderers, a disparate group of women charged with embroidering kneelers for the cathedral, and is soon entwined in their lives and their secrets. As the almost unthinkable threat of a second great war appears on the horizon, Violet collects a few secrets of her own that could change everything. That meant that going into this book, I thought that this story would deal with the Second World War, how the women who have experienced the First World War would navigate that. The secrets that she gathers aren't huge, mind-blowing secrets that are to do with the plot. Violet just happens to be there and through gossip-mongering women that are in the town, learns a few things about other people that don't really come to anything. There is no conflict whatsoever within the story. Violet gets whatever she wants and even though there might be some small thing for her to push against she's able to get through it relatively easily and the conflict that might be there is resolved within a matter of pages. There is never any sense of threat or anything that might change Violet's life. There is a plot point that is shoehorned in in the penultimate chapter just so that there is some sort of final chapter style thing where they're able to resolve the story had that plot point not been shoved in. I feel like the story could have just continued on and on meandering with no resolution, no character growth because there is no character growth. This is a decidedly quaint, quiet, cosy story that would appeal to fans of The People's Friend. Definitely nothing more than a nostalgic 1930s style story that we have seen done many times before, that we have seen done better. It honestly felt like a tourist's view of 1932. 
It felt like a rose-tinted view of history. It felt as though the author was trying to show off the good old days. Famously, my great-grandmother said, if anybody calls them the good old days, then they never lived through them. Even though Violet does run against some hardships in the beginning of this book, they are never such that she is threatened in any way and her livelihood can continue. I found myself disappointed by a book I had high hopes for. I thought it was going to be a great case for women's independence in the 1930s as they approached the Second World War, because that is what the blurb led me to believe. But all I got was a potted history of embroidery and symbolism within embroidery and bell ringing. And frankly, that is not enough for me to enjoy a narrative and therefore I did not enjoy this book. This is a middling book. I neither like nor dislike it. It was inoffensive and forgettable. I feel as though should you ask me what went on in this book three months down the line all I'd be able to say is that these people embroidered stuff and Violet really wanted to make a kneeler. And that was a single thread by Tracy Chevalier. If you have read this book and would like to discuss it, please feel free to do so in the comments. I hope that you have enjoyed this video and until next time, that is all.